Hi, I'm Ed from edthorn.com here to help you guys make the most out of your home studios. Welcome to part three of this behind the scenes series exploring recording through the Antelope Audio Zengo audio interface. Part one was the full review. Part two was recording vocals through the preamps. Part three is recording drums, bass, acoustic guitar and electric guitar. Part four is going to be mixing all this audio using the AFX two door software. And part five is going to be a comparison of the Antelope audio interfaces against the Universal Audio Apollo interfaces. If you can't be bothered watching the whole video, there are timestamps in the description or alternatively, hover your cursor over the bottom of the screen here and skip forward to whichever instrument you're interested in. They are going drums, bass, acoustic guitar and then electric guitar. Let's dive into this video. The Antelope Zengo obviously only has two inputs, so I've used two condenser mics on the kit. In an ideal world, I'd have used ribbon microphones, but I don't have any, so I can't do that. Uh, but I've used a Jay-Z V67 above my head here, and a Jay-Z V47, which has a nice low-end bump, about two feet in front of the kick drum. Now, these microphones have both been measured from the loudest part of the drum kit, which is the snare drum, so they are equidistant to minimize phasing issues. Now, with a full drum kit, there's inevitably going to be some phasing issues, but I prioritize the loudest parts of the kit. The reason I've got the V67 up here is because this is what I'm going to be listening to, or it's a similar height to my ears, which is what I'm going to be listening to to control the dynamics of the kit, because obviously I can't individually mic everything, we don't have the channels for that, so this has got to get an overall level of the whole kit. So I'm playing the cymbals a little bit quieter, the toms a little bit louder so they project a bit more, and it's on this side of my head just to minimize the amount of hi-hat bleed going into the microphone. The mic at the front of the kit is predominantly picking up the bass drum, but also the rest of the kit and a little bit of the room as well. If at any point you consider purchasing the Zengo audio interface or any of the fantastic microphones that I use in this video, there are links in the description below for your convenience. Purchasing any of your home studio equipment through these links is a great way to support the channel if you found value in this video. Here's the kick drum on its own. And bringing in the API style EQ. And bringing in the impressor here. And finally, I've put a BAE 1073 style preamp on the end, just for a bit of fullness to the sound. On the overheads, we have the BAE 1073 preamp with a little bit of gain dialed in. Now this is auto gaining itself. So if I push this up, it's not gonna increase the volume. It's just gonna increase the saturation like an analog preamp would do by increasing the gain, but it's compensating the gain for us, which is really useful. And the overhead without any processing. And bringing in the BAE 1073 preamp. Just a little bit of saturation there. Next up, we've got an SSL style EQ and I've gone for the orange version, which I believe is the 9000 version. And scrolling down, not last but not least, we have an SSL G-Bus style compressor. Guys, if you're liking this video, please hit the like button and do it right away while you remember. It helps YouTube recognize that people are enjoying the video and will push this content to more people, which helps me and will help more people. And I really appreciate it. So thank you for taking the time to do that. All right, to record the bass, I've got my good friend Simon Caviani in the house. Simon is a London-based singer, songwriter. He's recently had a top 10 song on the iTunes alternative chart with an incredibly catchy song. Simon's going to be recording bass for this track today. Let's dive into the preamps, into the um, Zengo and find some awesome sounds. On screen now, you can see the Zengo Synergy Core control app, and this is our monitor routing station and also where we can impose plugins and processing on our preamps. This is also where we can duplicate the sends that we are recording. So we can record a dry version of the send we're recording through the preamp. So my vocals are going into input two. The bass is going in line in on input one. 
and let's see what plugins we've got to play with. I did notice when I was setting this up that the first thing we have is a tuner, which is really useful to have in a plugin chain before we start recording. Should we tune up? Nah. <laughs> That's the spirit. First thing I'm going to go for is the BAE preamp because this makes bass sound nice and thick. Let's just play with the saturation. Can you give me a few notes? gonna add in a compressor and for the bass I really love the Opto LA2A style compressors. Try and find a guitar amp. Now I notice most of these are for guitars. However, there is a bass super tube at the bottom. Let's have a fiddle around with that. Right, I don't want the ultra high treble on. Um, let's bring the, that mid range back in. Let's keep the bass. Don't want the, definitely don't want the bass cut. Let's go for off there, and we'll play with the input gain and the brightness. enough grit there without needing the bright button. Yeah, that's a little too much. Let's put on a guitar cab. And again, I think most of these are guitar cabs rather than bass cabs, but there is a bass cab there. On the bass cab emulation, we have a couple of microphones and we can click on these and select them and move them around as if we were moving them in front of the cab. We also have independent volume dials for each microphone including a microphone at the rear, which is gonna pick up all the low mids and the low end, and a 45 degree off axis microphone. So let's just have a go through and see what some of these sound like. So that's microphone A. And this is, I guess, what is a, um, a ribbon microphone. That sounds good, let's dial them in. Just a quick blend there, but you get the idea of the sounds that we can create. So I think for the track, I want to err on the side of caution and I don't want to commit the guitar amp simulator or the guitar cab to the track, but we can add these on later using the AFX two door plugin, which we can add into Logic and insert these effects later. Guys, if you're enjoying this video, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification so you get notified when the next videos in this series are coming out. So for the acoustic guitar, we've got an Austrian Audio OC818 microphone, which is a beautiful microphone. That is on the 12th fret in front of Simon's lovely Taylor guitar. Let's check out some of these preamp modeling plugins we can use. So we had a play around with the sounds off camera and I've got a parametric EQ up here and a FET style compressor here as well. Simon, can you play something so we can hear how it sounds without any effects processing? And bringing in the EQ.
All right, so there's quite a lot of low end on that acoustic. So I've taken about 6 dB out from about 150, and that is a shelf. Let's add in the compressor. Bypassing the compressor. Bypassing the EQ. Bypassing both. Nice. Cool, so together they're bringing out a little bit more brightness of the guitar, just controlling the low end and I'm letting some of the enough of the peak transient through without squashing the sound completely, but it's still under control. But before then, if you'd like to see behind the scenes content of what goes on in the studio, behind the scenes making the videos, previews of products that I'm reviewing and so on, give us a follow over on Instagram and feel free to get in touch with me over there as well. So I'm pretty sure the Antelope Zengo uh, is designed by guitarists because in the Synergy Core presets, there are loads of guitar presets, which we're going to look at in a second. Simon's got his Fender Stratocaster. Let's dive into some guitar sounds. All right, so we're on the high Z input with quite a bit of gain there. And if we click on our preamp selector here, we played around with some sounds, but there are loads to choose from. <laughs> As you can tell, there's a wide variety of sounds there, and those are just from the presets. Some of them are coming with EQs applied as well and some compression, which is really cool. But we're going to take these a little bit further with the lead guitar sound. All right, guys, small confession to make. I managed to lose the video footage for the uh, guitar solo that we recorded. I'm very sorry about that. But make sure to subscribe and watch the next video where we're mixing the whole track in the AFX two-door plugin because you can hear the guitar solo in that. Let me know your thoughts, guys. I want to know what you thought about this preamp modeling technology. Which plugins do you think worked on which instruments? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll try to respond to as many comments as possible. Stay tuned for part four, where we'll be mixing this track using the AFX two-door plugin in Logic, which is a bridge between the interface and the door, so you can use all the plugins for mixing as well. And don't forget, subscribe for part five, where I'll be comparing the Antelope audio interfaces against the Universal Audio Apollo interfaces. I've been Ed Dawn, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all on the next one.